Okay, the uh, series is called, it's on Netflix, it's brand new. It's amazing how Netflix is not, it's not on your, your TV, but now it is through whatever service you might have, or you're watching it on your computer. But it's amazing at, here in 2016 how a non-network program and an, an internet streaming service has such an impact this program is something that there are just a, a lot of people talking about this this series, and it's called Making a Murderer. So before we go any further, can you two just explain, is this really a documentary or is it a series where they've taken some <clears throat> creative license? No, no, it's yeah, a documentary. I However, I think some creative license may have been taken, but it's all fact. Everything that you get is factual. Now, you may get opinion, <clears throat> But it's coming from the people involved, okay. right? And there's no there's no reenactment, you no reenactment at all, none of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's no reenactment. So again, spoiler alert: if you haven't seen this, I know a lot of people are talking about it. I will say it's reminiscent. My wife and I got into um, a, a podcast about a year, two years ago, called Serial. Um, it, it's kind of reminiscent of that. Okay, so here's my. I do have some criticism for this. Well, first of all, we have to set it up. Okay, okay, go ahead. So the situation is the guy. His name is Stephen Avery, mm-hmm. and when he was 18 years old, he got into. This is a troublemaker. He was in trouble. He he got into stuff. He uh, at one point there might have been a story where he did something deviant, move an action that was uh, torturing a cat. Um, him and a group of kids, uh, maybe that something had happened, the cat caught on fire or something. So this is some of the, the people have looked at, authorities have looked at as being a real troublemaker. Yeah. The family is also a uh, very uneducated, poor family that they run a, uh, they run a junkyard. And uh, the, this uh, Stephen Avery, um, the, he, uh, again, poor, uneducated, um, he's an easy target. Lack of what I think is a uh, is easy target. Lack of intelligence. Yeah. Beyond education, a lack of intelligence. Anyway, um, so there. Uh, and at one point, he dry he tries to drive off a, a woman. He drives her off the road. He's fighting with this woman. He drives her off the road. Turns out that she is the sister or niece or something, some relation to a member of the sheriff's department. So now the sheriff's department, they say, is against this this guy and this family. So a a, a, a raping occurs, and they pin it on this kid, this eighteen year old kid. Despite any, uh, despite all of the evidence that showed that it wasn't him, despite the fact that it looked like there was someone else that could have been a suspect, this sheriff's department went after this kid, and he became the guy. He gets convicted. He goes to prison. He spends 18 years there com- completely proclaiming his innocence. And he ends up with the, uh, the, uh, the Innocence Project. They get him out of jail based on DNA evidence. Turns out it was another guy that did it. Now, the sheriff's department, s- despite the evidence, when asked about it, they said, I still think he did it. Yeah, there's. <laughs> I still. I don't care. I don't think the D, I think the DNA DNA evidence is wrong. In watching I think it, did it, there are points where your blood just boils. It's yeah. very infuriating. As you much know, of you know a he's redneck innocent. as this kid is, yeah. You look at some of these members of the sheriff's department, and you feel the same way. The lack of intelligence there and is really is staggering. It's in Wisconsin. Yeah. So now he gets out of jail, and he's a hero. Even the woman who was raped comes and hugs him, and. Uh, apologizes. Uh, it was all done. You know how we see things in the media, and we're able to really create our uh, create. The, there's no reason for a jury, right? Why have a trial when we try people right through the uh, right in the media? Now, amazingly, as this is unfolding, he's out, and there's this whole question of how much money he's owed for the wrongful conviction. And there's lawsuits, etc. The state of Wisconsin is in the process of, like, naming a bill after, after him, him. Yeah, There's a legislator out there. Wrongful convictions. Yeah. So he's he is really being put on this he's, pedestal as an example of what can go wrong in the legal system. Mm-hmm. He's kind of like a hero of the legal system and of many. And as they're on, like, they're on the verge of signing this bill. And the documentary is following all of this, which is closing the case, basically, and probably closing the documentary. As they're in the midst of this whole thing, there's a murder. 
and, and they think he's the he's and like arrested. And it just for so it. happens it's murdering a woman who was making a it was an, involved taking pictures of a car, and she was scheduled to be at his house and was at his house on the last day that she was seen. Mm-hmm. So eight days go by. And they have no evidence. They've gone in. They've searched the house. They've taken over the property for eight days. Um, they can't find nothing. They find nothing. So on the eighth day, all of a sudden, they find miraculously right out on the open the the Rav Four keys. It's incredible. How it did is. this happen? Well, you know the the belief from the defense attorneys. Well, it's not incredible. They were planted there, and then there were drops of blood placed in the car. And then they find that they had a bonfire on Halloween. And the bones of this woman's body, they believe, are in the, uh, the ashes of the bonfire. Then they find a nephew that lives nearby. They say maybe he had something to do with it. They interrogate him to the point where every time he says, I didn't have anything to do with it. And, and he's, this kid is probably about the intelligence of a, of a five-year-old. They said he had a borderline IQ. It was like right around 70. Yeah, terrible. So the kid, they keep saying to the kid, well, listen, you get to go home with your mom if you just tell us what really happened. I mean, you really did it, right? I mean, you were involved. Did you do something? So by the end of this thing, they've got the kid. The kid is a part of the murder. They've got her, her roped up in the building. They've raped her. They've shot her. They've killed her. Meanwhile, there's no physical evidence of any of this, no blood splatter, nothing. They have this kid confessing, and when you watch the confession, and by the way, you get to watch it all, or at least major yeah. parts of it, yeah. it, it is clear that they just walk this kid into this confession. Absolutely. And everybody is just buying it. And he has a crappy attorney. They end up, this kid ends up, oh, I don't want to tell anymore, but it is, it's an unbelievably riveting series that will make you stand on your feet in, in your own living room and say, what is going on in this world, right? I, I mean, you I, I said did that. you literally did it. I, I literally did that, I think, at least three times where I just, yeah. I was so, like, I had to get up from the couch and, like, go out and have a cigarette. I was so angry, angry yeah. at what was going on. And um, when you watch this, you will be infuriated. Now, what are your criticisms? I do have a criticism in in that we you know we talk about Netflix and the technology that's this can have such an impact when it's only available on the internet, you know, the the other side of that is I, I don't think you can take it's an it's a basically an hour each episode I don't think you can take ten hours to tell this story because a couple of times I just wanted to Google the guy's name and find right, out what happened right. but you didn't now, want to, you didn't want to lose the right you didn't want to be the spoil have a spoiler out of this the other thing is. That's ultimately what happened. I got seven episodes in, and then a good friend of mine on Facebook put up his whole rant yeah, about yeah. how upset he was, you know, and he kind of spilled the beans. And, and frankly, you know, we, we did say spoiler alert. I mean, yeah, we, I think we've painted the picture here. This guy goes to jail, yeah. you know, for. And the, it's worse than that, though. It gets worse than that uh, when it involves the young boy, the 16 year old uh, kid. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't even believe what in the hell is going on out there. Now, the, uh, the prosecutor is saying. Well, a lot of the physical evidence you didn't they didn't even talk they left stuff out in the documentary they're trying to they're trying to sway you it's not true. Well, uh, yeah, of course he's going to say that. I just I couldn't stand this prosecutor. I hated uh, this guy. Same way here. Yeah. Um and the way it, they did the press conferences, they did a press conference, you know, and we've talked to, you know, for instance Scott McNamara and he will tell you Listen, there's things I can't get into. There's yeah. things I can't say. They this talked is evidence. about stuff I couldn't believe they, they let out. After they, I'm going to say, I'm going to say after they coerce, I'm going to use that word, after they coerce a confession from this teenager who has a borderline intelligence, it's, it's embarrassing. Definitely, it's embarrassing. It, he, is me, he is a mental midget. If there was ever a situation where you describe someone as that, that's what you would describe this kid as. So He did not understand what he was doing they come out and and in their defense there's a, there's a real emotional element but they're almost in tears law enforcement is almost in tears in retelling this story but i i mean they force fed the kid yeah. this confession there's at one point where they're going we know something happened to head to the head what happened to the head and he yeah. goes uh a gunshot uh, he punched her yeah no no but something else happened Come on, uh, come on, you know it. You're uh, going to get to go home if you tell this. Come on, what a, come on. So he's just throwing on. out this stuff. They cut. We cut her hair. Oh, okay, okay, well, what else did yeah. you do to the head? 
Uh, I don't know. What, you know. No, something else happened to the head. Come on, I wonder what happened. That to the is head. what Tell this interrogation what happened to the head. was like. Wow. Uh, he kicked. He kicked her in the yeah. head. Okay, he kicked her in the head. Okay, now what else happened? What, and at one point, this is the most egregious part. The kid has no idea where he's going. The other uh, investigator in the background goes, he shot her in the head. Tell us he shot her in the head. And he goes, uh, and then, 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 then it becomes, you know, did you shoot her in the head? Did you shoot her in the head? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, we shot her. So I, I'm, it is amazing. And the, the biggest defense that the prosecution had in this was saying, are you kidding me? Are you expecting us to believe that a that a sheriff's deputy who puts their lives on the line every single day would, without any evidence, you have no evidence, would plant this evidence? And meanwhile, the prosecution has no evidence. So if if you can say that this guy could do it without any based on circumstantial evidence, why is it possible? that a dirty cop could could exist. It almost is as if they were saying that that's impossible for someone, a human being, who just so happens to become a, a in law enforcement, could do something wrong. I mean, that's the part I'm sitting and watching. How is it that you can take this leap on this person who's not in law enforcement, but you can't take the leap on someone who has become a, a member of law enforcement? I mean, it is just unbelievable. you got to watch it. It's on Netflix. The, if you Google it, Stephen Avery, it's called Making a Murderer. And episode one is available online for free. You don't even have to have a, a, Net, a Netflix subscription, but it's unbelievable. Now, we'll take that, table it, because I don't want to give away any more. We're both in agreement, right? That. There could be more to this story. Yeah. Um, is it possible that he did it? I guess it is. But for God's sakes, this is there is so much here that was done so wrong, and in any other court in America, probably the case would have been thrown out based on technicalities, whether it was guilty or not, just based oh, on gosh. technicalities, based on a conflict of interest. It's so infuriating it to watch infuriating, this. It is infuriating, and it could be you. It could happen to any one of us. I, I just want to just throw this thought out there, though. First of all, as I'm watching it, I'm thinking, where the hell is this again? There's no way I'm ever going there. Yeah, There's yeah. no way I'm ever going to this place. I'm not place. even going to eat cheese again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stay That's away from lot. the pepper, I won't, too. I'm not going to talk to Andrew because he's a Green Bay fan. Uh, and, I mean, I can't do it. This was uh, in Wisconsin. The other thing is I do not believe that law enforcement murdered this girl in frame. I, I believe the frame is in, but I don't think the cops killed her. And I that's, think to me, that's the, the one stretch. I think the one did. You, well, it's possible. Yeah. That's just my take after the whole thing, because I think it has to be. Otherwise, there's too much. There are too many moving parts. There's no way all of this could have fallen in place without someone in law enforcement actually committing the murder. Crazy story, folks. And it's and it's real. And you got to watch it. And now, now I don't even have to watch it. Yeah, now uh, I don't even have no, to watch you it. Do. It's great. We left out a couple parts. <laughs>